My name is Eric Iwala. I'm one of the directors of uh, the executive board of the Tufts Alumni uh, Association and uh, would like to welcome you tonight. So uh, welcome to the honorees, the alumni, family members, friends, and other members of the Tufts community. And uh, welcome to President Monaco. Um, the uh, Senior Awards Pro uh, Ceremony was established in 1955 to celebrate the achievements, service, and dedication of some truly extraordinary Tufts alumni who inspire us. Thank you to the awards committee of the Alumni Association for their great work in selecting this year's honorees. If you're on the awards committee, please stand. And thank you as well to the awards committee co-chairs, Nancy Pinn and Maria Madison, for your work on this committee. Right over here. Thank you to the many nominators who draw us to the amazing work of graduating SM, FA, and Arts and Sciences and Engineering seniors. If you submitted a nomination, please stand. Oh, right. I hope you've all had a chance to meet this year's honorees whose names are listed on the screen. They've got incredible stories to share, so I encourage you to follow up with them at the end of the program. There are many interesting people in the audience this evening, such as honorees, Tufts leaders, alumni, and others. Jumbos may follow up with fellow Jumbos using the Tufts online, alumni online community. Be sure to update your profiles, especially once you graduate. Um, I would now like to introduce tonight's award winners. For the honorees, after I announce you, please join me to receive your award and share brief remarks. And first we have Amanda Borquet. <laughs> Amanda Borquet is majoring in international relations and sociology. While at Tufts, she's loved being a part of a variety of groups, including the Tisch Scholars Program, Focus Preorientation, Protestant Student Association, Generation Citizen, the PD Green Program, the Tufts Debate Society, WMFO, and a few others. <laughs> wow. Uh, she will particularly miss the easygoing and friendly student body at Tufts that has allowed her to make meaningful lifetime friendships. She has yet to figure out postgraduate plans but is hopeful that she will be able to work on issues of migration or incarceration. Amanda, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. Um, yeah, I don't have any prepared remarks written, but I uh, just want to express gratitude from the bottom of my heart um, for everyone at Tufts who I've met um, and encountered, even in the smallest of ways. I'm definitely going to miss a lot of the acquaintances who I've come to admire a lot um, over the past four years um, and who have empowered me and inspired me to participate in all the things that I got to participate in while at Tufts. Um, I'm going to miss this place a lot and very dearly as we wind down to the end. Um, and just thank you for everyone and all the honorees, all the family members, all the friends um, who are so loving and supporting to us. It really means a lot to me to see everyone here just so joyous and celebratory. So thank you so much. <laughs> Anna Del Castillo. Anna Del Castillo, a Mississippi native, studies international relations and colonialism studies. She is a member of the Sigma Iota Rho IR Honor Society and is a bridge to liberal arts success at Tufts scholar. She served as a class senator for four years 
and currently serves as the TCU Vice President. She's an organizer for the Tufts Indigenous Peoples Day Movement, a career fellow, a synaptic scholar through the Institute of Global Leadership, a representative on the Admissions and Financial Aid Committee, and a member of the Interfaith Student Council. Anna is the lead ambassador for the Andrew Goodman Vote Everywhere team and is a Boston Interfaith Leadership Initiative Fellow. Anna will attend Harvard Divinity School in the fall to pursue a master's degree in theological studies as a Dean's Fellow. Anna, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to, to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. Wow, this is just, I'm just taking this all in. This is such a joyous event, and I am so incredibly honored to be here with you all, surrounded by friends and family, but there's one really special woman that I want to shout out, and that's my mom, who, um, um, she surprised me and flew in this morning from New Orleans, so special shout out to her, but, you know, I wrote kind of this long speech, and Thinking about it, I just like don't really know if that's that's where I want to take this. I, I think I just want to say thank you to everyone who has made Tufts an incredible journey for me. Thank you to everyone who's taken the time to read my papers, to apply to grad school, for Shannon Seaver over there, who has been an incredible boss at the Career Center. To my friends, I see Maya Pace right there, who's been just held me and seen me so much through these years, including everyone at this table, 30 Tesla, you are incredible. Um, I think the best thing about Tufts is that it's full of transformative moments. Um, moments when people make you feel seen and held and loved and just push you to do your best. I'm looking at my best friend right now, Vinnie Krause, trying not to cry because she is just such a force and I know that she's going to change the world and just being able to be part of your journeys, um, having you all be part of my journeys is the greatest gift I think I've ever been given. Um, I come from Mississippi, was born and raised in pretty conservative communities, and have a pretty radical, badass mom. <laughs> so, like, you know, coming here and being around just this crew and this community has been so important and um, meaningful in my life. So, I want to thank you all. Um, thank you for this award. I, you know, there are just so many people that are so deserving of it. And I guess um, my parting word is that. Tufts has a lot of growth. We have a lot of things that we need to make better. There need to be more Latina students here. There need to be more students from Mississippi here. There need to be more low-income students here. And I think that we're making the right steps to get there. And I really believe that beautiful change is happening in this place. So thank you all for allowing me to be on this stage. Um, I love you guys so much. I love Tufts. And um, I'll be a mile away. So I hope to come back and visit. And to heck with this speech. <laughs> Kevin Galasso. Kevin is unable to be here this evening because he's representing Tufts on the baseball diamond in, in Maine. It's my pleasure to read a brief introduction and then play his pre-recorded speech. Kevin Galasso, originally from Westfield, New Jersey, began attending Tufts in 2013. He studied quantitative economics, finance, and computer science while representing the Jumbos on the baseball team. He quickly became involved with a Tufts financial group Delta Upsilon, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Massachusetts Bay, and Relay for Life. In his sophomore year, Kevin was diagnosed with stage 4B Hodgkin's lymphoma. After seven months of chemotherapy and the help of doctors, friends, family, teammates, and fraternity brothers, Kevin was able to return to his studies and the pitcher's mound the following year. Kevin won the Murray J. Kenny Award in 2017 for positive attitude and perseverance. Upon graduation, Kevin will join Becton Dickinson, a global health care company, as a financial analyst in their finance leadership development program. Kevin, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it's my honor to, to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations.
Good evening. I'm extremely honored to be receiving such an important award. I'm so grateful to the Tufts University Alumni Association and the Selection Committee for choosing me as one of the recipients of the 2018 Senior Awards. When applying to colleges, I knew early on that Tufts was my top choice. I had heard much about the school from my sister who graduated in 2013. I was impressed by the strong academics, the dedication to service, and the baseball team's legacy. I applied to Tufts early decision and was overjoyed when I was accepted. My experience at Tufts quickly became defined by my studies in quantitative economics, computer science, and finance, my practices and games with the varsity baseball team, and my volunteer experiences with Big Brothers Big Sisters and Team Impact. In my sophomore year, everything came to a screeching halt. On November 4th, 2014, I went to Tufts Health Services with what I thought was a cough, but a few days later, I was facing a diagnosis of stage 4B Hodgkin's lymphoma. My cancer diagnosis brought a lot of uncertainty to my life. There were two things I was never uncertain about. One, I would get back onto the hill and resume my studies at Tufts, and two, I would get back on the mound with the baseball team. My treatment course was grueling, and I even had doctors tell me that resuming a full course load and playing baseball would be too difficult. But I knew how important Tufts was to me, and I refused to stop fighting. In the fall of 2015, I returned to Tufts with my cancer in full remission. My body was weakened from my fight with cancer, but my resolve was as strong as ever. I stepped up my studies and my workouts, with my clear goal in mind of getting back on the hill and on the mound as a Tufts jumbo. On March 18, 2017, I returned to the mound in a game against St. Vincent College and pitched a shutout inning. One year to the day later, I pitched on the same field and earned my first collegiate pitching win. I truly had come full circle. Within a year of returning to Tufts after my illness, I had made Dean's List, and the baseball team became the 2017 NESCAC Conference Champions. Every goal I had set for myself during my illness had been achieved. I would not be here today without the support of so many people, and I would like to take a moment to thank them. Thank you to Dr. Heim and the Tufts University Health Services for their care and support of me, both home and away from Tufts. Thank you to Coach Casey, Coach Kenny, Coach Clark, Coach Brendan, Coach McDavid, and Coach Tower, my teammates and alumni from the Tufts University baseball team, and the Tufts Athletics Department for pushing me and believing in me. Thank you to my brothers at Delta Upsilon for making me feel like I was never far from campus, even when I was at my loneliness during treatment. Thank you to the economics, computer science, and finance departments for the knowledge and training that I will take with me into my professional career. And thank you to my family, my mom, my dad, and my sister for all the love, support, and encouragement they've given me. The leadership and community support here at Tufts is unlike any other place on earth. It provided comfort when needed, strength when needed, and perseverance when needed. And that perseverance got me through my lowest and brought me to this moment right here and now. Graduation in May will be bittersweet as I'll be leaving behind a place that has become so important to me. But I'm excited to start the next chapter of my life and represent Tufts as I join Becton Dickinson, a biopharmaceutical company where I will be a part of the financial leadership development program as a financial analyst. And I know I won't be away from the Hill for long. I'm already looking forward to returning to Tufts to cheer on the baseball team as an alum. I'm forever grateful for my experiences here on the Hill, and I'd like to end by saying, Go Bows! Thank you. Next, we have Joanne Kong from Long Island. There's Joanne. From Long Island, New York. Joanne Kong pers <coughs> excuse me, pursued a major in quantitative economics and a minor in philosophy. Outside of classes, Joanne was engaged with the economics and finance communities, serving in leadership roles within the Economic Society and the Tufts Financial Group. At Tufts, she dedicated time to the community as the president of 180 Degrees Consulting, a social impact consultancy that helps nonprofits achieve their full potential, and as a resident in three halls, uh, resident assistant, sorry, in three halls. After graduation, she looks forward to joining Morgan Stanley as an analyst and to continuing her work with 100, 180 Degrees Consulting as a part of the global leadership team. Joanne, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award 
for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. So first and foremost, sorry, I'm a little short. Um, just want to thank everyone um, for coming today. I'm truly honored and humbled to be receiving the award. Um, I guess I'll start off by saying that my friends will tell you that I'm one of the most indecisive people out there. And so after four years on the Hill, I still really don't have a clear opinion of Dewick versus Carm or uphill versus downhill, and that's really a fact. Um, so for a high school senior who had no idea what I wanted to study, Tufts was the perfect exploration ground. And as a freshman, I was so excited and overwhelmed by the opportunities around me. I had considered so many different majors at, like, to the point where I could tell you exactly what courses made up a certain major. My friends dubbed me as the walking course dictionary. And it was only after I spoke to one very helpful upperclassman in the Tufts Economic Society at a course advising session where I finally made the decision to major in quantitative economics. And this is also the first time out of many that I realized that jumbos really help each other out. Um, no matter what, and that the students at Tufts would be a resource not only for the four years that I'm here, but you know for the rest of your life. Um, so clubs are another factor of uncertainty, and I was the freshman that went to literally 15 general interest meetings in a week. Um, but at one of those club meetings, I met two upperclassmen, Hanson and Mike, who for one year, for an hour every week, would spend time teaching me different concepts in Ginn Library. And so this is how I was drawn to organizations like the Tufts Financial Group and 180 Degrees Consulting. Um, this is just one example, but if it weren't for people like Hanson and Mike and other upperclassmen who have provided me great mentorship, um, I'm not sure if I would be the same person that I am today. So four years later, although I fin finally figured out what classes to take and like what clubs to join, um, I still feel just as lost and indecisive as I did before. What's changed, though, is my outlook towards it. I'm realizing that my indecision is actually a really, really good thing. I learned to channel it into a love for learning, exploring new things, and making the most out of my surroundings. Um, in my senior year, I ended up doing things that I never thought, you know, that I'd ever try. So, like, just such as like drawing, such as dancing the Tufts Dance Collective, and finally learning to be okay with parents not laughing at my awkward jokes on tours. And so, <laughs> looking forward, I'm excited for all the uncertainty and chaos that would and will inevitably come my way. But I know Tufts has prepared me really, really well. Um, it's not only given me the education necessary, I know I, I also have professors like Professor Zabel, who will always be a really, really great resource, and friends that I'm really lucky to call lifelong friends. Um, so lastly, just want to say a really, really sincere thank you, family, friends, everyone I know at Tufts, Tufts alumni, um, really wouldn't have been here without your support, so thank you. I would now like to introduce Maria Madison, Awards Committee Co-Chair, who will introduce our next four honorees. Thank you, Eric. I'd like to start by calling Benia Krauss up. <laughs> Benia is a Truman and Marshall Scholar finalist and is also an international relations major, double minoring in urban studies and colonialism studies. She serves the, as the Tufts Community Union Senate President, realizing a platform to tackle spatial inequity on campus. She spoke on these themes as a part of a 2018 TEDx Tufts speaker, um, drawing parallels to her di directed research on urban design as a peace building tool in conflicted cities. As an Oslo scholar, Benya conducted research and wrote speeches presented before the UN General Assembly and White House for UN High Level Commissioner Dr. Ala Murabit. She also holds, holds numerous national roles with Amnesty International USA, where she served as the Massachusetts State Legislative Coordinator and is now running as the youngest candidate nominated by the AI USA Board of Directors. Benya, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Y'all are the best uh, cheerleader team out there, so thank you. Um, all right, wow, this, okay, there we go. You know, Ana Del Castillo inspires me always, but 
I've unfortunately had a glass of champagne, so I feel like I really do need to stick to my speech. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> a few weeks ago, my parents, who are here tonight, made me help them figure out the smart TV that they've unknowingly had for months um, <laughs> so they could show me this hour-long speech by David Brooks, a columnist for the New York Times. Now, I don't really agree with David Brooks on everything politically, but he said one thing in particular that I've carried with me. He said, it's the things you choose to, t to chain yourself it, sorry, I'm going to say it again. He said, it's the things you choose to chain yourself to that set you free. I thought it was a pretty terrible piece of advice. <laughs> How could chains ever possibly be freedom? But I've been thinking about it more, and I've come to realize that a lot of the beautiful moments of radical love and critical compassion that have transformed my life have come from the people in this room who have chosen to chain themselves to something greater and finding freedom in that. I think of Professor Eichenberg, my intro to IR professor who remembered my name after the first day of class, who pivoted his life work to self-reflect and think critically about how women can and should be meaningfully involved in politics and security, who invested his faith in me so that I may find my place and my passion in this field. I think of my Senate family especially the freshmen, who are the only people masochistic enough to spend hours on Wednesday and Sunday nights arguing over a two-thirds vote to break the travel radius so that student groups could continue to do the work that drives and make this campus so vibrant. I think of the hours we spend on a Saturday night forming whereas clauses, seeing the problems of socioeconomic, racial, and spatial inequities on, in this institution but having the courage and the resilience to reimagine something different. I think of my brilliant housemates and best friends, Maya, Claudia, Gabby, Dan, Isaac, Zoe, Steph, and Anna, who have chained themselves to theses, teaching, <laughs> architecture, sexual assault awareness, and healing the world through the divine, who have chained themselves, chained themselves to helping me find the best in myself. I think of the women leaders on this campus, Mary Pat McMahon, Lois Stanley, and Anne Moore, who helped me celebrate auspicious grace, uh, discover a passion for peacemaking and urban design, and reclaim the power of my femininity to bring the strength needed to my leadership. And of course, I think of my parents, who from day one made raising me a purpose greater than their own. They each bring healing to this world in so many different ways. But please know that out of the millions of people both of you have healed, there is no one you have healed more than me. So to those who have chosen to chain their lives to lifting up mine, thank you. And please know that because of you, I too will seek freedom by choosing to chain myself to the people, purpose, and communities greater than me. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to next invite or announce the award for Jamie Nykri. Where are you, Jamie? Where are you, Jamie? <laughs> Jamie is a political science major from Hartford, Connecticut. During his four years at Tufts, he has worked to increase the community discourse around politics and civic issues. These efforts have come through his leadership with the Andrew Goodman Foundation, where he helped create a dialogue series that has covered issues from college affordability to criminal justice reform. He's also the chair of the Administration and Policy Committee of TCU Senate, where he has guided projects to make Tufts budget process more transparent and promote better use of physical spaces. After graduation, he hopes to work on government policy helping to make institutions of government more accessible to those who need it most. Jamie, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it's my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you, you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations.
so I just, you know, scribbled down a few things. I didn't prepare anything quite as elaborate as Benya. Um, I have a lot of experience following Benya, so <laughs> don't worry. Um, the Senate table really liked that one. Um, so I think before anything else, I really have to thank my family um, and especially my grandmother who's here tonight. Um, and I, I wouldn't be here without them and I am so grateful for their love and support. I also want to thank my girlfriend Tess who I met freshman year in our, in our dorm. Our suites were right next to each other and she has just been my rock for four years. Um, so when I first got to Tufts, I threw myself into work with The Daily. I am a regular contributor to the opinion section, which will come as no surprise to anyone who knows me. Um, about a year ago, I wrote an article on the 2015 census report, which is pretty apropos of me writing about something that pretty much no one else cares about. <laughs> Um, but I felt that the census report was important to talk about because it was pretty uh, unashamedly good news. Um, incomes for the lowest Americans rose faster than incomes for the wealthiest Americans. <laughs> the unemployment and uninsured rates fell. Basically, Americans got a raise with health care thrown in. And not that many news organizations talked about this because we have sort of a bad news bias, I think, as a country um, and as a people. We feel justifiably that talking about a great census report uh, denies the experiences of so many Americans that are still suffering um, and are still working to, just to get by. And in that vein, there are two stories that I can tell about my time at Tufts. The first is a, a story of frustration. During my four years here, I've been frustrated by professors who seem to care more about research than they do about students. I have been frustrated by an administration that at times does not seem uh, to want to be transparent and um, about issues of affordability. And I have been frustrated by a student body that for all its greatness uh, seems to sometimes highlight the things that we differ over when we have so much more that unites us. But I can also say that I am incredibly grateful and, and happy about my time at Tufts. I didn't get into Tufts the first time I applied. And rather than go to a school that I didn't want to go to, I took a gap year and worked for a year because I knew that Tufts was the place that I wanted to be. And I'm so glad every day that I made that decision because every day that I've been here, I have been inspired and supported by the friends that I've met, um, and the, the professors that I've had in the classes that I've had. Um, and I wouldn't be the same person without these experiences. There are pieces of Tufts that I've worked to address and changes that I hope to see, but I am unashamed to champion the best parts of this university. The administrators like Ann Moore, who has supported me so much this year, um, the, and, and most of all the friends that I've met who I know will be by my side for the rest of my life. Um, a lot of them are at this table. Um, it is because of them that I'm standing here tonight. Thank you. Our next award goes to Sarah Pizarro Jaramillo. Sarah is an artist from Medellin, Colombia, where she studied graphic design and photography. In 2015, Sarah arrived in the US as an au pair. During this period, she discovered a passion for muralism. She applied to the School of Museum of Fine Arts and was granted a presidential scholarship for merit. She was later selected to auction her art at the Museum of Fine Arts, as well as the legendary Lenox Hotel. Sarah has been commissioned to paint murals around Tufts University and has painted live in major venues such as the House of Blues. She moves between multiple two-dimensional mediums, from illustration to painting, focusing on deep exploration of her own personal thoughts and experiences, including her perception of self. Sarah is graduating from the BFA program at the School of Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts. 
Sarah, on behalf of the Tufts of Univer on behalf of Tufts University Alumni Association, it's my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you've done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I wrote a very little speech. Um, I want to thank uh, my teachers from SMFA. Uh, being at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts has been a very enriching experience for me. Um, and I have to thank them for this. Um, I want to say thank you for um, all your knowledge that you have given me. Um, especially to Kendall Reese, Andy Graydon, and Isabel Beaver for being a big support uh, during this year. They have been not just a helping hand, but also they have given me the best that they have by sharing their knowledge and their wisdom in their artistic field. I want to thank also my teacher, Ethan Morrow, even though he's not here. Uh, he's a person that I admire as a, as a person and as an artist. Uh, he's been a great support for me, too and Elo Guzman, who is a big part of the Tufts community. He's an exceptional mind in his field and an excellent person. And to my mentor and friend, Charles Goss, uh, he's not here either, but without him, my experience in SMFA wouldn't have been nearly as good as what it has been. He has helped me and trusted me and supported me in my difficulties. Finally, I want to say that I am glad that I had the opportunity to be here at Tufts, even though it's been a small time because Tufts just merged with SMFA, uh, but it has challenged me in ways that I never thought I would be, and thanks to this, I'm a stronger person. I believe in myself and in the power of my mind. Now I am a much more confident person, and I know that I can achieve any goal that I can set for myself. And I also want to thank my boyfriend and his mom, because they have received me in this country and they have made me part of their family. And I'm really grateful for that. I love you. Thank you. Our next award goes to Rati Srinivasan. Rati is a pre-medical student who spent two years researching in the Thomas Organic Chemistry Lab and one in the Goldberg Psycholinguistics Lab. She has also served on the TCU Senate for three years, including serving as the TCU Education Committee Chair and the TCU Historian. Additionally, she serves on the Executive Board for STOMP, a program that teaches engineering in local elementary schools and works in the Division of Genetics and Genomics at Boston Children's Hospital. She has walked many dogs for Leonard Carmichael Society, <laughs> animal aid, and spends most of her free time with animals. Rati, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it, <laughs> um, it feels really incredible to be recognized for this award, um, but I really couldn't have done it without, honestly, the most supportive group of friends that anyone could ever imagine having at Tufts. So sorry for a minute while I call them all out. Um, thanks to Haley, to Jenna, to Julia, to Paulina, to Clara, to Daisy, to Danny, to Kevin. Hope I got you all, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, they are honestly the people who have gotten me through my entire time here. They support me for everything to the point where like 20 minutes ago when I told them that I didn't have a speech prepared, they suggested that I ask Anna to borrow the one she didn't use. And I was like, that's probably not the best thing you could do, guys. Um, but I really, my time here at Tufts has been defined by this exact group of people who I care so much about. And with having a group this supportive and teachers this incredible, 
I've really learned that my voice matters a lot. And I've learned to speak up at Tufts because people listen when I talk and people care about what I say. And even though in a few weeks I'm leaving Tufts and I'm leaving this incredible supportive group, what I won't leave behind is this feeling that I know that I can make a difference. So next year at medical school and beyond that, I get to carry with me this idea that it matters when I speak and I should speak up because I can make a difference in this world. And Tufts has really taught me that. Thank you. I would next like to invite my co-chair for the Alumni Awards Committee, Nancy Pinn, up, who will introduce the next four awardees. Thank you, Maria. I'd like to call Selena Steinberg. Originally from New Jersey, Selena has been a double major in mathematics and child development with a double minor in drama and dance. In the past four years, Selena has enjoyed participating in the Tufts theater community. She is currently stage managing a senior acting capstone, Lungs. Selena also volunteers with several Leonard Carmichael Society organizations. She leads a Tufts originated fifth grade Girl Scout troop in the area and is the coordinator for that association. She visits Medford Somerville schools to help children develop social emotional skills with peace games and spends time fostering learning for a, pre for a preschool child with, spe with the special friends group. She is grateful for the incredible opportunities that Tufts has given her. Selena, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and for the larger community. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to say to you all tonight, I started looking through some of the documents on my computer from past semesters, and I came across this assignment that I had completed for my freshman year advising course, Personal Fitness and Wellness. It was a letter that I had written to myself during that very first week of classes, freshman year, talking about how my week had been, what I was nervous and excited about, and my expectations for the next four years. The letter began, Dear Selena, I started college this past week, and I don't really have a concrete feeling about it yet. I think that I'm going to like being at Tufts. All the professors seem really enthusiastic, and the people are also really friendly. I have high expectations for myself and for my Tufts experience, and I hope that I'll be able to make friends and have a positive time at Tufts. When I wrote that letter, I had no idea that I would form such amazing relationships with my professors and my classmates, or that Tufts would shape the person that I am today to the extent that it did. I am so, so grateful for the opportunities that I've had during my time at Tufts, both in the classroom and outside of it. The Tufts community is filled with incredibly passionate people, people that I am lucky enough to learn from and interact with every single day. I'd like to thank the Tufts University Alumni Association for this honor. I also need to thank all my professors and mentors for their guidance, and especially my advisors for not calling me crazy as I kept declaring more majors and minors. Um, finally, thank you to my family and my friends who came up here today for your endless support and encouragement. One of my favorite things about Tufts is that I've been able to and encouraged to find connections between all of my interests. Math, child development, drama, and dance, they all seem very different at the surface level, but I've found that they fit together more closely than it may seem. In my inquiry and analysis class, I was able to discuss the impact of a drama education on the development of empathy in children. I had the opportunity to participate in Elliot Pearson's service trip to New Orleans, where I investigated how the arts play a role in schools and child development. 
This coming Thursday, as part of my senior dance capstone, I'm going to present a fourth grade lesson plan that I created um, to the current Creative Dance for Children class that integrates fractions and dance. These are only a few of the instances that I've been able to see how each of, each, each of my courses of study might fit together. I came into Tufts as a freshman unsure of what I was going to pursue. Four years later, and I still don't know exactly where life will take me, but I know that Tufts has given me the tools that I need to succeed in whatever I choose to do. Thank you. Sebastian Torrente. Sebastian, Sebastian Torrente was born in Miami, Florida, and knew from an early age that he wanted to devote himself to engineering and architecture, spending free time building model buildings and cities. When he was 11, he moved to the city or the town of Fort Pierce, where he further developed his interests in engineering, starting in middle school. After graduating high school, Sebastian enrolled at the University of Miami School of Architecture, honing his drawing skills. Yearning, though, for a unique balance in both technical and artistic training, he later transferred here to Tufts, where he majored in both civil engineering and architectural studies. At Tufts, Sebastian managed the newspaper, the Tufts Daily, and the Urban Planning, Policy, and Prosperity Group, and also found his passion for foreign languages. Sebastian, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you have done and continue to do for Tufts and the larger community. Congratulations. So thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, let's see. Um, I'm truly grateful to have uh, been chosen for a 2018 Senior Award. Um, I want to begin by saying thank you to everyone who has supported me during my time at Tufts. And I'm touched by everyone who was able to come out here tonight to support me. So thank you all. Um, to begin, I'm truly grateful for a lot of people in my life who have inspired me um, and energized me, not just as a student, but as a human being. Um, I would like to start with my mom, who couldn't be here tonight, um, who has given me endless support despite all the adversities that she faced um, to give me a better life here in the U.S. She instilled in me the value of perseverance, the importance of curiosity, and the virtues of faith and patience, all of which have made her seemingly bleak story into a successful one. I was in a state of disbelief the day I received my acceptance package to join the engineering program particularly because the ebb of my expectations led me to believe that attending Tufts would be an impossibility given my family circumstances. The corollary, the corollary about how I would manage afterwards led me to believe further otherwise. My grandmother used to say, lo más importante es no llegar primero, sino saber llegar. Roughly translated from Spanish, it means it is the, not the destination, but the journey that matters. What seemed like the destination, my acceptance to Tuff, was only the beginning, as the memories and lessons of what it took to get here became the reasons of why the Tuff's trek has been so fulfilling for me. One of these lessons came from my cousin about education. She taught me that true learning is dependent not in rote memorization or tests, but in people, the relationships embodied, and the presence of synergy, staples which I would later associate with that famous application prompt, let your life speak. Coming to Tufts, I knew I would be continuing my path as a builder and designer, but I never imagined how much of an impact the Tufts community would have and how I saw the mission of the two disciplines I was studying. The extent of the exchange of ideas and comprehension I saw here became the reason I developed a love for languages and joined the Daily. It was in my first semester at the Daily, working as a layout editor, where I discovered that its successes were not with one person or section, but with the combined nature of the office, where the ideas of our nightly routine were constantly being self-fueled and circulated. Before Tufts, I struggled to balance the ambition I had with what I wanted to do and what I thought was expected of me. 
I came, I came to Tufts trying to find just that, where I could be true to myself in every respect. The emergent quality of the community has never fallen short, providing me with the framework to discover my love of urban planning and fine tune my goals to build dynamic, inclusive communities, just such as the ones I've experienced here. The heartfelt memories which I attribute to this community have empowered me to devote my life as a builder and planner of communities, and likewise, to make a difference in the lives of others. So on a final note, thank you, Professor Sanaye, for nominating me. Um, thank you to the Alumni Association for making this award possible. To my colleagues at The Daily, um, JJ, Miranda, Kathleen, The Daily would not be successful had it been for your commitment and hard work. Um, and thank you to everyone who has made my career at Tufts so, fu so fu fulfilling and life-changing as it has been. Thank you. The next honoree is Sarah Wilner Gewertz. Sarah cannot be here tonight because she's representing Tufts on the softball field. So instead, it is my pleasure to read a brief introduction and then we will play a brief recorded message from Sarah. From Saratoga Springs, New York, Sarah Wilner Gewertz is a mechanical engineering major with a double minor in engineering education and engineering management. She is an infielder for the Tufts softball team, which won an historic undefeated national championship in 2015. Sarah is also a research assistant at Tufts Center for Engineering, Education, and Outreach, where her work has been focused on developing learning experiences and technologies to bring engineering into the K-12 classrooms. Next year, Sarah will continue her career as a jumbo by pursuing her PhD in mechanical engineering. Sarah, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is our honor to bestow the Tufts Senior Award for all that she has done and continues to do for the Tufts community and the larger community. Congratulations to Sarah. As a high school student, I knew pretty early on that Tufts was where I wanted to be. The combination of having a great softball team and the amazing engineering education research happening on campus made it the only university I wanted to go to. But senior year in high school, when I sat as a nervous recruit in coach's office and promised her that even though I looked small, I could play big, I couldn't possibly have dreamed of all that my Tufts experience has been. Through Tufts, I've had the opportunities of a lifetime, both on the softball field and in the classroom. Above all, what stands out the most to me about my time at Tufts are the incredibly special people who have shaped my experience. Chris Rogers, my advisor, always tells me that we have a big budget for breaking things, which is a mindset that extends far beyond financial resources and speaks to the constant effort Tufts students and professors make to think outside the box, even if it doesn't always work out the way you think or hope it might. Through my work at the Tufts Center for Engineering Education and Outreach, I've been fortunate enough to get to visit a lot of classrooms, both close to Tufts and plane rides away. Every time I tell a kid to try their crazy idea, the look on their face is just amazing, and I really believe that through the work happening here at Tufts, we can put that look of excitement about learning on the face of every child, everywhere. One of my favorite stories from my four years here happened during a workshop I was running as part of a research team studying how middle school students conduct systems engineering tasks using LEGO robotics. I had run right from softball practice wearing our all gray practice sweats. About 15 minutes into the workshop, one of the students looked over at me and said, why are you wearing your pajamas? Which caused a lot of laughter and epitomizes one of the greatest things about Tufts, the ability to be more than just a student or an athlete, but to truly be both. From Coach Milligan and Coach Ebbs and the long-standing culture of Tufts softball, I've learned more about how to deal with uncertainty and what it means to work hard than I ever could have in the classroom. Most importantly, I've learned that being a champion isn't about the trophies, although those are great, but it's about doing the little things right, the desire to always be better, and the unrelenting will to win. It's truly an honor to receive this award, and congratulations to all the other recipients on their accomplishments. I'd especially like to thank Chris Rogers, Coach Milligan, and Coach Ebbs, and all the people who have helped make my undergraduate time at Tufts so magical. I'm sorry that I couldn't be here in person, but I'd like to thank the Alumni Association for everything they did to make Kevin and I a part of the event, and for all that they do to make Tufts such a special place. Thank you. Lucy Zwigard. <laughs> Lucy Zwigard strives to live by the phrase, think globally, act locally. She grew up in both New York City 
and the Finger, La Finger Lakes region of upstate New York, a life path that leaves her deeply interested in the rural-urban divide. A double major in biology and French, she is passionate about the intersection of science and culture, particularly around food, nutrition, climate, and health. During her sophomore year, Lucy co-founded the Tufts Food Rescue Collaborative, a thriving community coalition that fights food waste and hunger by creating healthy meals out of surplus food. She is passionate about making change in our food system, supporting smallholder farmers, and cooking delicious meals with family and friends. Lucy, on behalf of the Tufts University Alumni Association, it is my honor to bestow upon you the Tufts Senior Award for all that you do and continue to do for Tufts and for the larger community. Congratulations. Hello. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. It's really, really special to see so, um, so much of my wonderful family here tonight. So many of my amazing, creative, beautiful friends, um, my food rescue partners, um, my Tufts family at large. If I had time, <clears throat> I would individually thank every single one of you, but I think I would, I would run out of time doing that. Um, so please know that I love and cherish and appreciate all of you so much. You continue to inspire and motivate and challenge me every day, and I am eternally grateful to have you all in my life. So thank you. I'm very honored to be part of this group of incredible seniors. Um, thank you to everyone who put on this event, especially the Tufts Dining and Catering workers who work tirelessly to feed us great food um, and to take care of us students every day. They are at the heart of this campus. Um, thank you so much to all of you. And importantly, a huge thank you to all of my brilliant professors who have guided me through my academic um, journey here. Special shout out to the fantastic French department and my supportive advisor, Anne Christine Rice, who believes in me and my ideas even when I'm not sure of them myself. Donc merci beaucoup. I want to mention something that Rabbi Jordan of Tufts Hillel told me about recently which is that um, taking part in this sort of ceremony or any other celebration that brings us together actually enriches our time. It slows us down and it enhances the valuable and limited time that we all have. So I invite you to relish in the idea that the way in which we experience and feel time can actually change when we celebrate together and slow down from our busy, crazy lives that many of us, especially tough students, tend to have. Um, I'd like to make an important amendment to my bio that was shared just now and continues to be up there um, with a, a brief story. About two weeks ago, my friend Josie and I met with the Rural Futures Institute from Nebraska, which is a group of individuals and communities who, quote, combine strategic foresight and grit to take action realizing that our complex future requires mutual respect and collaboration between rural and urban regions. It was a very fruitful and exciting conversation. The Institute reached out because they wanted to discuss social entrepreneurship in the food system, which relates to the work of the Tufts Food Rescue Collaborative. Um, and food is one of the key links between rural and urban spaces. Um, Personally, I was really interested in talking with this group, having grown up half of my life in a very urban setting and the other half in a very rural part of upstate New York. So at the meeting, I met this woman named Connie, and part of her official job title is she's a futurist. And I'd never heard of a futurist before, so that blew my mind. Um, and she brought up a lot of interesting things, but what really resonated with me is how crucial mindset is in planning for the future 
in terms of the mindset that you hold with you, um, in terms of the future that you would like to have for yourself or your community or both. So the amendment to my bio is instead of thinking about the rural-urban relationship as a divide, instead thinking of it as the rural-urban connection, because rural and urban spaces are connected. Um, oftentimes these connections go unseen, and so I think this is part of the mindset that we need for a just and healthy future, um, specifically in our food system. Now, I'm a planner, and from a young age, I've been fascinated by the idea of paradigm shift. So for me, planning for the future um, is something that is more necessary now than ever, being soon to be college grads on the one hand, and also for the future of humanity at large. And it demands the question, how can we transition away from or break free of many current paradigms um, that dictate so much in our lives and in our society? Paradigms like convenience and consumption, paradigms like the fossil fuel economy, paradigms like industrial agriculture, white supremacy, patriarchy, the list goes on. And it's a big question, but ultimately we must embrace the beauty of diversity and all of its challenge and all of its greatness that it holds. So I'll wrap up with a quote from the Community Food Systems Conference um, from last December, which I attended thanks to Tisch College. Thank you so much, Tisch College where the keynote speaker, um, Winona LaDuke, who's an Ojibwe woman, farmer and incredible activist who spends most of her time these days fighting pipelines, shared with us um, one sentence which simplified a lot of what I just said. So I'd like to share that with you now, which is, the answers to problems we face today are not found in the paradigm which created them. The really exciting thing is that at Tufts, every day I see people around me who are challenging these paradigms. And I look out at you, all of my friends, and, and, I, and I applaud you for all of that work. Um, challenge these paradigms in an effort to reimagine the future outside of them. And I'm so proud to call these movement builders and these paradigm shakers my friends and my peers and my mentors. So thank you so much. Um, best of luck to you all. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Anthony Monaco, the 13th president of Tufts University. As you may know, Tony joined Tufts in 2011. Oh, you want to clap first? <laughs> Sorry. As you may know, Tony joined Tufts in 2011, coming from Oxford University, where he was the top administrative leader, the pro vice chancellor for planning and resources. Tony also has had a distinguished career in the sciences. A graduate of Princeton University and Harvard Medical School, he has led the pathway of innovation in using genetics to help unravel diseases such as muscular dystrophy and autism. Thank you for Tony for being with us. Well, thank you everyone. It's such a pleasure to host this event at Gifford House. Um, for the first time, we're able to do this because we put the tent up for the senior dinner events which are happening last week and the next week. So this is really all about seniors, this, these two weeks. But unlike the senior dinners, we're not going to have an open mic after I finish. <laughs> um, it's also just great to see um, so many extraordinary students here, their, their families, their teachers and mentors, and of course, all the alumni leaders which make this event possible. So I have to start by thanking the Alumni Association for continuing this tradition since 1955 in rec recognizing these outstanding students at Tufts. Now the awards committee, thank you to all those that sat on the committee and particularly to Maria and Nancy for your leadership. It must be incredibly difficult to select these 12 students from all the nominations because there are another 100 students with equally uh, great credentials to get this award. So um, thank you for doing that and thank you to those who nominated um, all these great students. To the honorees, um, you know, you really make Tufts a better place um, now than when you started. You really have, by your inspiring example, uh, strengthened our community. Um, you have made uh, the best possible reminder of why we all care about Tufts so deeply. 
So you've seen a lot of um, public service activities that helped improve the lives of people both locally and internationally. So congratulations to all of you. Um, we are absolutely confident that you're going to accomplish so much more after you leave here. Anything you set your minds to, you're going to make it possible. Uh, we look forward to following your careers uh, as alumni um, and also as the members of the worldwide Tufts community, you will expand the university's reach and strengthen its reputation through your achievements. You will become part of the Alumni Association once you graduate. And we hope that you will remain engaged with Tufts and exceptional students like you have gone on to serve in a variety of ways, um, interviewing prospective students, uh, engaging on our boards of advisors, and becoming members of the Board of Trustees. I was especially um, nice to see how many honorees were members of the TCU Senate and how many of the senators are here to support them. Um, you've had a great year. Your work is not over. This weekend, you have seven resolutions to get through. <laughs> But I have to give a special shout out to my president and vice president, uh, Benya and Anya. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with you um, this year. And thank you that all you've done. And if I ever get hit by the Davis shuttle crossing Prof Row, please put them in charge. This institution will be in good hands. Now, we're very proud of all the seniors that got the awards tonight, but we're also very proud of the faculty and staff that supported them. So thank you for all you did to bring them to this level of excellence um, before they depart. And we know none of this would be possible without the parents and families who have supported you for ma so many years and entrusted you to Tufts for your education. So thank you to the parents and families. Um, it's truly been an inspiring evening, and I um, hope that all of you have enjoyed it. It's uh, hopefully now we'll have a tradition of doing this event every year at Gifford House, and I look forward to it as always. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the evening. It's uh, been a wonderful evening, and I again want to extend congratulations to the honorees. The Alumni Association is tremendously impressed by your work, and we are proud to call you fellow Jumbos. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite the honorees to remain briefly for a group photo following the ceremony. Sorry. <laughs> Please remember to recycle your name tags in the baskets on the registration table. And thank you all for celebrating with us, and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>